Hello microwave energy harvesting enthusiasts. In this video I'm going to talk about the RFD 199A PCB and how you can use it to harvest microwave energy. The RFD 199A PCB is a compact design that is 30 millimeters by 12 millimeters on a 0.8 millimeter thick printed circuit board. The design consists of an RF to DC converter with a voltage output range between 0 volts and 5.6 volts. On the left side of the design is a voltage sensitive switch that will turn on when the RF to DC converter output voltage reaches 5.3 volts and it will turn off when the RF to DC converter output reaches 4.2 volts. The oscilloscope plot on the left shows the charging discharging cycle on the output of the voltage sensitive switch. When the output is zero volts, the internal RF to DC converter is charging up a capacitor located here, and when the switch turns on, it discharges into the load between 5.3 volts and 4.2 volts, and the lower the load, the lower this voltage goes. This figure shows a typical application circuit for the RFD 199A. You connect an antenna to the RF input. There's ground on either side and this uh, input is designed for an SMA connector for a 0.8 millimeter thick printed circuit board. You then select and solder in a capacitor, a large value between one, one millifarad and one farad with a tolerance, a voltage tolerance of 6 volts or greater. And as the circuit receives RF energy, this capacitor will charge. And if there's enough energy, this capacitor will get to the trigger voltage of 5.3 volts. And the voltage sensitive switch will kick in and your application circuit will be driven until the bias voltage on this capacitor drops to 4.2 volts in which case the switch will open up and the charge discharge cycle will repeat. One SMA connector that mates well with the RFD 199A is uh, product 1864 from adafruit.com. Uh, this you can solder on. You need to solder both sides of the board to uh, get a good nice fit and uh, you have to be careful of this header hole on the back side there's a gap to ground and you need to make sure you don't short that. Here's one possible Wi-Fi harvesting circuit that you can build with the RFD 199A PCB. Uh, you can solder two wire dipoles that are uh, 1.2 inches long and this, these two antennas can collect both polarizations really a single antenna but it's got two active arms uh, orthogonal to each other and you solder your large value capacitor to a ground pin and a positive pin coming out of the RF to DC converter and then you connect these two nodes to your application circuit and uh, below are some plots from our data sheet where we vary the load and as you go lower in the load, you can see you discharge the capacitor faster, and uh, but you still get about the same uh, same period or frequency of charge discharge because the power is kept the same in these two tests. We have a lot of customers asking for more and more current in order to charge mobile phones or power. Uh, higher power circuit. Uh, the single RFD 199A can put out at most 100 milliamps and typically it's closer to 50, yeah, anywhere from 50 to 100 milliamps depending on your on your load. Uh, but there is there's a hard limit at 100 milliamps. So one thing you can do is daisy chain uh, or connect in parallel the RFD 199A with another one. The, the outputs can be tied together because we have a voltage sensitive switch. The circuits are now isolated from each other and 
uh, one as one unit charges up and discharges the other unit can be discharging at the same time or it may be off and in a lower power state and then discharge at another time so you can add many of these in parallel and get much higher powers uh, but it, it is going to be pulsed unless your applic application circuit load is uh, high and the incoming RF energy can drive that circuit uh, continuously. Here's a mechanical drawing of the RFD199A PCB. We have header holes spaced every 2.54 millimeters or 0.1 inch on a uniform grid so you could add headers, DC headers on these pins and stick it into your breadboard. Uh, we recommend an SMA for higher frequencies but you could breadboard it on your breadboard at lower frequencies uh, say under 500 megahertz a breadboard should be able to transfer energy uh, and not have too much rail to rail capacitance that would cause the RF energy to short out but still some power would get through and you'd be able to uh, test this without doing too much soldering. So let's review the pinout of this design. You have an RF input signal pin with grounds on either side for an SMA connector. You have the VMON or monitor voltage pin uh, which is the output of the RF to DC converter and you can solder your capacitor here to between ground and this hot pin and this voltage is clipped at 5.6 volts so if there's not enough energy being taken away from this capacitor then we have a Zener diode that kicks in and starts dissipating the energy for you so there is some circuit protection in there and on the output of the voltage sensitive switch that's V out and that will be a pulsed voltage between 4.2 volts and 5.3 volts and that will drop as you have a lower and lower load because there is some resistance here in the in the switch uh, so you as you go lower in loads then that resistance starts to be, become significant and this completes the tutorial of the RFD199A.